Hey, what's going on everybody? Commander Crane here, and we are finally back. We are doing another Pioneer Showdown. It's been like, I think like two months since we've done a Pioneer Showdown. Um, it's just life inside and outside of Magic has been really crazy. I'm here with Nate again. How's it going, Nate? It's going pretty good. I'm super excited to play today. I honestly, me too. Again, we haven't done one of these in a while. Um, we have a little bit of catching up to do before we happen to the video. So obviously we got the new Commander Crane playmat, which is pretty sick here. Um, it's just a custom one that I made for the channel. We're going to be making a um, one of like the big double ones um, pretty soon here. I just got to kind of narrow down the design. Um, yeah, so definitely cool, cool playmat. Definitely follow the channel though. I've got a lot of extras, might be giving away one at some time. But anyways, so what we're playing today. Obviously, you saw the thumbnail, so you guys know what we're playing. Today, I'm going to be playing Golgari Zombies. Uh, it's a very fun list. I've never played it on camera, but uh, my wife likes to play it at FNMs, and it does pretty well. I actually played it, funny enough, at one of our FNMs the other day in Modern and did pretty well with it. So, very excited to play some zombies today. Nate, what are you playing? I am playing uh, Teamer Adventures. Uh, I With the new cards coming out, I wanted to try Adventures. Uh, Teamer Adventures in Standard. I remember it being pretty solid. Bone Crusher Giants, uh, the Artifact, Lucky, Lucky Clover, Clovers, you know, Brazen, uh, Borrower. Brazen Borrowers, and just copying all those effects with the Lucky Clover was really good. Edgewall Innkeeper. I, these cards are still good. The problem is, is there's not a lot of support for like the adventure mechanic as just being your deck until we got Baluna. And Baluna is a big... Big upgrade for the adventure deck, I think. Well, was it a pun because it's a giant or no? I mean, it wasn't intentionally <laughs> a pun, but it is a pun. Perfect. All right, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and shuffle up for game one, and we'll see you in just a second. All right, so we are ready for game one here. Nate is on the play. How's your hand looking? My hand is looking pretty good. I think I'm going to keep it. Um, yeah. All right, yeah, my hand's looking pretty good. I got the best creature in the deck. On one here, got a two drop and a three drop. So, yeah, we're looking pretty good here. Sorry, you go ahead and start us off. All righty. Um, so I'm going to start with a Botanical Sanctum and a Gilded Goose. The Goose is loose. Yeah, I'm going to make a food token. A food token. Uh, I... Oh, did we forget a food token? I forgot to grab a food token. Okay. For there now, that's my that's food our food token. token. All right. All set? <laughs> yeah. All right, draw. I'm gonna play my Takanuma, and I'm gonna play a Champion of the Perished. Woo! All right, that Go is ahead. the best. That's the best card in the deck, right there. Best card in the deck. I'm gonna untap. Just don't stomp it. <laughs> I'm gonna draw. That was a good draw. I really needed that actually. Uh, we're gonna play a land. Ooh, there we go. Baluna? No. Oh, we're play the lucky clover. Unlucky, dude. That, unlucky for you. Very <laughs> lucky for me. Go ahead. All right. Draw. That's not a bad card. All right. I'm going to go ahead and play a Mutavolt. And then I'm going to play a Lazatep Reaver. So, first, I'm going to trigger the champion um, by a zombie entering. It gets uh, a plus one, plus one counter. And then the zombie army enters from the Lazatep Reaver, which gives it another counter, which is great. And I'm going to attack for. Three, you know, just because why not? I'll take three. All right, I'll use that as our one. So go ahead. Well, I'll use the black dice just to show that it's a it is a one one zombie army. So what we're gonna start with here is playing a Katria Trion. Gross. Uh, I gotta read this card. <laughs> okay. Um, and then we'll play. We'll tap two. And we'll play. Um. Do it. Do it. Think for a moment here. Yeah, we're going to play uh, Steam Clean. Ooh. And then it's going to double because of Lucky Clover. And I'm going to bounce your champion and your zombie army back to your hand. Hex! All right. Gross. And this goes on an adventure. On an adventure. Um, and then I guess I will also use my food token to play Edgewall Innkeeper. That's hacks. I'll pass. All right, I'm gonna draw here. Um, definitely not the draw we wanted. Um, hopefully Castle Octoin tapped, which is mighty unfortunate. So, 
This is interesting. I got a couple different avenues I could take here. Edge wall is kind of gross. How many cards do you have in hand? Two. Two, yes. Yeah. So whenever you cast a creature, okay, adventure creature spell. Okay. I had to read it too because I was going to cast it first if it was right. <laughs> um, I think I'm just going to go ahead. We're going to be mana efficient here. I'm going to go ahead and play another Lazadep Reaver. Um, I'm going to trigger, make another zombie army, and pass. Okay. Oh, yes. I'm going to untap. I'm going to draw. This is where things get a little awkward with lands because they start entering tapped. Um, but that's all right, because we're doing pretty good over here. We're feeling pretty good about ourselves. Um, we're going to start with two. And we're going to cast the Scalding Viper and Ooh. draw with the edge wall. Scalding Viper, the elemental snake. And then... I suppose we'll pass for now. Okay, untap. Draw. Well, it's not a bad draw. Fortunately, it doesn't come into play untapped for us. But I think we still have... we got a couple different plays we could do here. Um, I this think card is so much better than I thought it was. Scalding Viper is very good. It only does it to opponents. All right. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to play Death Baron. I'm going to take one from the Scalding Viper. All right, because it's... Yeah, Spell of Man Value 3. All right. Yeah. So I'm going to play Death Baron, and then I'm going to move to combat. Yep. And I'm going to attack for six. I will take six, because your dudes have Death Touch. And plus one. one. Well, Stonks. Plus one. All right. And it's your go. I'm going to untap. I'll allow it. I am going to draw. I'll play a forest. Forest. Um, I'm going to start with, I think it's unlikely that you block, so I'm going to attack with my Scalding Viper. Yeah, I'm going to take one. Oh, two. 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 Yep. Yep. Let's go to 17. Um, not worth then, the trade for me. I guess I want to do this now, so I'm going to... Crush your bones. Crushing with, the bones. Stomps. Um, so I'm going to deal two damage to Death Baron, and I guess I will do uh, two to one of the Lazo Test Reavers. All right. And then I'll cast the Bone Crusher. Stonks. Draw a card. And draw a card. Good turn. Not bad at all. And then I'll pass. All right, untap. Draw. That was not bad. Oh, I will also. Oh, no, I don't, because it's only opponents. What was it, what? I, Scalding Viper is yes, on side. Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> only opponent. Fantastic. So much better than I thought it was. I might put that up to four of them, because I thought it was just me. All or right. I thought it was both. I'm going to one. I'm going to play a champion, and I'm going to take one from the Scalding Viper. Yep. And then I'm going to tap three. Uh-oh. And I'm gonna cry. No, I'm gonna go ahead and play something. What that something is, I'm not 100% sure. Got a couple different options here. Um, that would be pretty good. Now, nah, we're gonna go ahead and play the Death Baron. So I'm gonna take one from the Scalding Viper, uh, and then trigger that enters, and Champion of the Parish gets a plus one plus one counter. And then I'm gonna move to combat. Uh -huh. I'm gonna attack for four. So now I gotta think whether I want to take this damage or block and lose my Bone Crusher Giant right now. Bone Crusher trading with a token or a last step reaver doesn't feel great. But sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> That's true, yeah. But I think I'm gonna take it, because I, I have a pretty good hand still. So that'll put me to five. No, no, no. You were at eleven, right? Yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, so you go to seven. Seven. I did math wrong. Math? Math is hard. Sometimes. Go ahead. Untap. And draw. So I'm going to start with 
Seek the Beast. Gross. So I exile the top two twice. Lucky Clover's so good. <laughs> two lands, a Viper and a Edgewell Innkeeper. Not bad, not bad. So I'm going to play the Island as my land for turn. I'm going to start by casting another Edgewall. And then I will tap two. And I will bounce two of your dudes. I'll bounce the uh, token to get a thing off the board. Black. And I will bounce the Baron, so you have to recast it. All right. I suppose. Uh, this goes on an adventure as well. On an adventure. And then um, I will move to combat. And I will attack you for six. Um, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and I'll take six. I'll go to nine. Um, second main. I suppose I'll cast the Elusive Potter and draw two cards. Nice. This deck feels so good to pilot right now. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean, you've drawn like how many extra cards and with because of like the Lucky Clover, you got all the extra value there. And, God damn, drew another top land. Um, yeah, I wish that would run tap. That would have been that would have been mighty nice. Um, uh, a couple different options here. Um, <laughs> let's see. That is awkward for sure. He's got the champion. Got that. I don't hate that. All right. Uh, I'm going to tap three. I'm going to play a Glissa. I'm going to take one from that and then trigger. That is pretty good. Uh, and then move to combat. Uh -huh. <clears throat> I'm going to attack for three. Um. You know what? The goose has served its purpose at this point. I'll just block with the goose. The goose is cooked. Go ahead. The goose makes foods, but I think I have other things I'd like to be doing. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, I have to read this card. Is it until end of turn? Until my next end step. So yes, this is gone forever. Oh, okay. Because I did it on my turn. Questing druid. Okay, I guess I don't really care about any of that, so we'll play the Besaju untapped. Who endures? So, with less than, so that would still be able to block even if I cast. I have a question about how Lucky Clover works with Prowess. So it says whenever you cast and a copy is not casting. Okay. If that's your, yep. <laughs> assuming that's your question. Sure. I just wanted to make sure. I was pretty sure that's how Could it you imagine how cracked that would be? That would oh be stupid. Goodness. I'm glad it doesn't work that way. <laughs> <laughs> that was like a rim rock night. You're just like... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> just get them. Um, so I guess what we're going to do... We'll start with... Baluna's Seek Thrills. 
Uh, mill seven cards, then put all cards that have an adventure from among them into your hand. So I'm going to mill 14 cards, mm -hmm. then put all the... So I'll separate them. That is... I think it was six, right? Yeah, you got one more. One more, seven. Mm -hmm. So I take these two. And then these... Well, those are love struck and a elusive honor, right? Yeah. Yep. Okay, perfect. And I trigger promise. One... Two, three, four, five, six, seven. I hit five that time. Ooh. Not bad at all. Yeah, I just drew like seven cards <laughs> <laughs> for five mana. And. That felt really good. <laughs> so now we're going to try to win the game, I think. I think. We're going to play Stomp. Yep. Uh, target that twice. Yeah. Since we're playing for camera, I guess I won't pick it up. But I think, well, actually, I think I'm just dead no matter what. Yeah, I am. Because this is three and then... Yep, so say because I can't even block that, even if I block and that. And then I'll block I'll swing all out with the edge yep. walls and stuff yep. too. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah, I definitely me being pinched on mana was was pretty unfortunate because I had like a go for the throw and I had another lord in my hand. So the fact that my third my third, fourth, and fifth land was tapped was like really hard because I wasn't able to like double spell. Um, but definitely, like, seeing the power of Lucky Clover was pretty huge, because you bounced four permanents just with that, and you killed... I killed four you, permanents. You killed, you killed the Glissa when you normally wouldn't have, and you killed the... What was it? Well, because you bounced the champion. Uh, no, you only stomped... I stomped oh, you stomped twice. I yeah. stomped twice and killed three. No, I killed, killed more than that, right? Because I killed... No, it was three. Yeah. I killed the Glissa, I killed the Baron, and I killed the uh, Lazo Tep Reaver. Lazo Tep Reaver, right. Yeah. So, yeah, no, definitely saw the power of Lucky Clover for sure. Um, definitely with all the adventure cards, it's just, you get so much value, which that's like a good example of a card of a deck. And we'll talk about this more in the post game is like, like I, I can't remember the original quote, but it's like with Patrick Chapin is, Sometimes you got to play like less powerful cards together that make a really good synergy that's really powerful. So. We actually have a friend in our group that he shits on Lucky Clover all the time because <laughs> yeah. it's two mana. It's so it doesn't, but it doesn't matter though. Like it's just the fact well, that you, you just, just saw get so much that? late game value, right? You yeah, just saw it that game. I played right. it on turn two, right on time, and. It pretty much single-handedly won me that game. I don't think I win that game if I only bounce one of your creatures on the turn that I bounce one of your creatures. Or yeah, I mean, honestly, I I think you definitely could make the argument. Um, so okay, all right. Well, we're gonna go ahead and shuffle up for game two, and we'll see you in just a second. All right, so we're back for game two. I am on the play. I also forgot to mention this. We're doing two pre-boarded and two post-boarded games. I feel like I always I always forget that until like we're halfway through. But anyways, my hand's looking pretty good. I got a one, two, a couple threes there, and a couple lands. So how's your hand looking? My hand's not as good as last time. Uh, I don't have the turn one goose. I don't have, currently I don't have the clover, but I, it looks pretty good. I think that it's, I think that it's keepable. Sweet. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and lead us off. Swamp and a Crypt Breaker. Go ahead. Not as scary as last time. No, Champion is definitely a lot better of a one drop for sure. Well, better to be lucky than good, especially with the Clover. Uh, I did draw it this turn. <laughs> nice. Draw. Uh, I have to choose a uh, color when it enters. I'm going to choose, I guess, red. Rojo. All right, uh, I'm going to go ahead and play a Razor Lash Transmogrant, and I'm going to attack for one. That card, it's basically, a, for those who played back in the day, it's essentially a, uh, oh my god, Scrap Heap Scrounder for zombies. Right. Okay, uh, next we're going to play Copperline Gorge. Tap two and play the Lucky Clover. Ooh. It's probably the best card in the deck. <laughs> All set? Yep. Right. Well, that was an interesting draw. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and play 
a Slitherbore pathway. Uh -huh. um, I'm going to go ahead and tap three. I'm going to play Lord of the Accursed. That's a good one. And I'm going to attack for five. I'm going to take five. Oh, sorry, six. six. Uh, okay, I can't math. 14. Go ahead. Okay, so I wanted to play Bluna this turn, uh, just as the creature side of it, but um, I don't want to do that anymore. <laughs> I feel like that might get me killed. Uh, so instead, we're going to play this island. Island. Um, and for now, I guess we'll pass. All right. Tap. Draw. Not a bad draw, but fortunately not doing a lot for me right now. Um, could make the argument to do this, but I don't think I want to. All right. Um, want to play a champion of the perished? Sure. Okay. And then. I'm gonna tap one. I'm gonna play a foul liar knight. Um, before foul liar knight enters the battlefield, I'm gonna. I gotta read this card one more time. If your opponent controls four. Basics, which I don't have right now. Yeah, I'm gonna kill the Razor Lash and the Champion of the Parish in response. Unfortunate. Okay, uh, well, in response to that, I'm gonna tap these three zombies and I'm gonna draw a card, lose a life. Yep. Okay, so then Razor Lash and Champion die. And I'm gonna follow my. Foul Mire Knight presumably resolves now. Yep. Uh, and I'm going to attack for two. I will take two. Go ahead. Um, I suppose we'll start with... Land untapped, go to nine. I might regret this, but no. Gotta, make, gotta take gotta take risks sometimes. Um and then I will pass. And then the pass. Alright, draw. Man. Our mana has definitely been a it's been a thing for sure. Um I'm going to tap two and three. I'm going to play another Lord of the Accursed. I'm going to respond to the second Lord of the Accursed. Sure. Double salt, my dude. Uh, I'm going to play Embreath Blaze. Oh, okay. Um, I will... Do I want to get two creatures out of the way, or do I want to just get the first Lord? I think, I think I'll go for the first Lord of the Accursed. First just, Lord. Okay. Yeah, I'll kill that. Okay. I'll take a little bit more damage this turn, but yep, Lord of the Accursed. All right. Um, move to combat. Yep. Attack for four. I'm at five. We're getting risky. Go ahead. Uh, second main or end step. I'm gonna seek the beast. Sure. So I'm gonna exile the top four. That stomp's probably gonna come in clutch. <laughs> As it usually does. And then I'm gonna untap. I'm gonna draw. And I'm gonna play this copper line gorge. I'm gonna uh, tap two. Red and a blue. And I'm gonna stomp. I'll stomp both of these. Sure. Um, and I will I 
suppose I'll... Do I want to go to three? That's risky business, huh? Yeah, I think yeah, I'm okay with that. Oh, wait, that's still in the turn. I don't want to do that. That's wrong. I'll play... This questing druid. Sure! All set? Yep. Sure. Nope. Still not it. Um, move to combat. Uh -huh. Attack for two. Black. Sure. All right. Second main phase. I'm gonna play Lazatap Reaver. Get a zombie army. Uh -huh. And I'm gonna play another Crypt Breaker. That's Go ahead. Pretty good. Do -do -do -do. Okay. I'm gonna play Seju. Bo Seju. Um, zombies you control gain menace, huh? It's not bad. And all of my tutus right now. Bears. So, I guess what we're going to have to do is either play some blockers or, which I could only play two of, and then you can give all your dudes menace and put me to one. If you don't have anything else, uh, you I think what I'll start with is Questing Druid. Yeah. Uh, seek the Beast again. Which ones were exiled from the... Did you exile the ones yeah, from the last turn? Okay, perfect. Well, I got two... Blockers out of that, I think, which is a good thing. Uh, so we're gonna play the goose. The goose is loose. Food, food uh, token. I have a food. <laughs> it's a great I'm food gonna, token. Uh, play the edge wall and keeper. Yeah. And the questing druid draw card. Mm hmm. Played the Besaju this turn. Yeah. So those go away, and it is your turn. Okay. Uh, end step. I'm gonna draw a card. Lose a life. Yeah. All right. Untap. Draw. Yeah, that sounds about right. Um, finally got a fourth land, which is great. I think three dudes. So you can block one creature. And then you would go to one, which is not bad. I don't hate that. But I think instead I'm just going to collect the company. That's pretty good. That could kill me right here. Nope. Except I'm... Ooh, okay. Well, I barely, I barely didn't whiff. Okay, I'm going to play a Lordy Curse and a Glissa. Well, those ones can't attack, so I'll just put those back here. All right, uh, move to combat. Uh -huh. <sighs> Getting in there. So, three, 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 three. These are all threes. They're all threes. Yes. Yep. So I have to block the three of them to not die, right? Yes. So I'll just jump. Okay, yep, so you'll take three. Three, yep. Go to two. Go ahead. I think I might lose this one. I was finally able to get that collecting company online. I started my hand, had three lands in it too, and I drew two extra cards. It just took me forever to finally get that land. Need like an adventure board wipe. Oops. There is one, but I didn't play it. Um, another 
Milwaukee Clover. Clover. Yep. They have like a heart's desire. Maybe you could do something. I think I can live through this turn. I think. Not if I can help it. Maybe. I have two foods. Yeah. You're very hungry. It's like the city's blessing. You just are hungry if you have food. Go. Okay. Um, keep tap. Sure. I'm gonna bounce, bounce, bounce. Bouncing those, huh? Okay. It's not bad. So now the question is, I could do, I don't hate that play. Um, I'm gonna give my zombies menace. Yeah, good, good. Yep, I had to try. Right, I mean, I'm not, I'm not I may be an idiot, but I'm not that stupid. All right, and then maybe if I, yeah, there we go. I was gonna say, if I drew the land, that'd be nice, because I could at least play, replay one of the lords. So, okay, all right, weird game two, but we got through game two. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and get ready for sideboarding here. We're going to kind of go over what we're bringing in, what we're taking out, and why. We'll see in just a second. Alrighty, so we are back for sideboarding here. Nate, we'll go ahead and start with you. Just let me know what you're taking out, what you're bringing in, and why. So, the first card that I decided that wasn't good enough was the Elusive Otters. I just don't think they're very good in this matchup. They don't block very well. You're usually casting your stuff on your turn because you still want to cast the creature side of things and like questing druid. Sometimes you got to cast the stuff on your turn. So it's just a little awkward. I'm not the aggressor. I don't really care about attacking. I'm trying to stay there. So Brotherhood's end perfect for that purpose. Uh, same thing with these other cards, Brazen Borrowers, Scalding Vipers. These are just trims. A balloon is just kind of a little slow in this matchup. I still have two in the main board, so I still have two more in the main deck. So I'm I'm pretty confident that I'll do okay without having four. Um, they're good, but I need to survive, and these cards help me survive. And Scalding Viper seems amazing in this matchup. As a matter of fact, if I had read the card before I built the deck, I probably would have played <laughs> four in the main. <laughs> Uh, I thought it was like um, Eidolon, where right, it was each when, player, it was right. whenever. Uh, it, but it's just your opponent. So probably uh, if I were to redo this deck, it would those would be in the main deck, and I would figure something else out. That's fair. <laughs> I, I definitely agree. I think how you win this matchup is by getting value with your Lucky Clover, bouncing all my stuff, drawing a bunch of cards. I think that's exactly how you win this matchup. So for sure, I can definitely agree with that. So... Over here, I'm bringing in two Fatal Push and the four Thought Seas. So I'm cutting the Murderous Riders and the Go for the Throw. I know it's weird, like, oh, you're bringing in two removal spells and you're taking three out. So I want to cut my removal spells down, but Fatal Push realistically hits all of your creatures. And Murderous Rider is just expensive for the cost and Go for the Throw, again, I want to cut a little bit of removal, but not a lot. So that's why I'm bringing in the pushes. Um, the Thought Seas, I think I want in general to try and snag like your Lucky Clovers, maybe when you're tapped out your removal spells, that kind of thing. Um, and then I'm cutting the Crypt Breaker, and, well, one of the Crypt Breakers and two of the Foulmire Knights. Thing is with Foulmire Knight and Crypt Breaker is essentially it's just your backup when you don't have a turn one champion. It's something to do. But I would rather have Thought Seize on one for sure than Foulmire Knight and Crypt Breaker. I know that's not like the perfect reasoning there, but essentially that's what I'm trying to do. Like, I'm not trying to kill you. I'm not able to kill you super quick in this matchup. So late game, I want to be drawing more like Lazotep Reavers, the Trent Laser Last Transmogrant, you know, Stack Lords, that kind of thing. So that's why bringing in the Thought Seizes there specifically. So, okay. All right. Well, we're going to go ahead and shuffle up for game number three. We'll see in just a second. Alrighty. So we are back for game three. Nate is on the play. How's your hand looking? It's a little slow. Uh, four, four lands in the opener. Hoping I draw some spells, but I have a lucky clover and I have some interaction. So, oh, there you go. This is definitely the weakest hand I've had so far, but it's still okay. I've got my one drop, I've got my two drop. I need another land for sure, um, which I'm playing 20, I think 20, 22 or 23 in the deck. So I don't know, hopefully I get another land. All right, you go ahead and start us off. 
We're going to start with the uh, tap plan because I don't have a one drop. Sucker! Draw. Oh. Oh. Oh, that was a good draw. Go. My extended art champion of the perished. <clears throat> Laps and stomp. Lucky Clover. Oh, they're going to stomp it. Why would I draw. stomp it? I can two for one you next turn. That's true. Um, speaking of two for one, I'm going to Sure. That's not a two for one, but. Oh, so it's super dead. Um, <laughs> I think I'm going to take. I think I'm going to take the Viper. Um, yeah, I'll take the Viper and then I'll take for one. I will take one. Go ahead. Well, I'll play an untapped land and you know the rest of my hand, so. Nice. Go ahead. Draw Swamp. Nope. Well, this is kind of the thing I talked about. Um, but I am going to push that. It's not, it's oh, you don't right. control. Sucker! <laughs> <laughs> that one's a sorcery, though. Yeah, sure. All right. Combat. Meow. Uh, yeah, I'll take one. Okay. Go ahead. One's not a lot. It's not none, but it's not a lot. It definitely could have been way worse. Me oh. not having another land is I'm very unfortunate. Uh, oh, sage you. And I suppose... Another heart's one? desire? Sure. Uh, I get two one ones. Mm -hmm. uh, these are krakens, but uh, they work. They're one ones, and there's two of them. Uh, and then I'll also cast it. Yeah. All set? Yep. Cool. Yep, of course. Turn too late. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play... Uh... <laughs> yeah, we'll play Death Baron. Trigger. Um, combat. I will attack for three. I think I'll take it. Go to 15. Go ahead. Weirdly enough, I think I'm actually the aggressor now. Because <laughs> I, I have more damage on the board. And my hand's pretty good. Uh, I'll shock that in and go to 13. And then I'll attack you for 7. Alright, I'll block one of them and then I'll take 6. Yep. So I'll go to 12. Go ahead. And uh, draw. That's a good draw. Um... A couple different options here for sure. Could do that, which I don't hate. <clears throat> I'm gonna tell. <tie. clears throat> um, move to combat. Sure. Cha five. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I go to eight. All right. Go ahead. Nice cocoa. You like that? Not bad. I suppose what I'll do is I'll cast the blaze half and deal you four. Go to six. And then I'll untap. Mm -hmm. I'll draw. And I'll attack you for six. Collect company. Sure. All right. <laughs> Five, six. That was pretty good. Um, I think because I definitely don't want to die here. Um, actually, that's fine if I do this. Lazotep Glissa. Okay, triggers. Um, so I'm gonna. Bounce two things in response. Sure. 
I'm going to bounce the Gliss uh, and the Champion, I think. Yeah. Okay, those are in hand. I've got these. Yes. Okay. Move the blocks. Yep. Sure, you take nothing. Zero. And then those die. Yeah. And that dies. Yeah. That's good. Um, I definitely, I wanted to hit a Lazatep off of that. I'll make that two one ones. Company. Yeah. Worked out very well for me. I'll pass. Tap. Draw. Um... I'm gonna play Champion of the Parish. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna play Lord of the Curse. Uh -huh. Trigger. Yep. Um, we are gonna mash. You have no cards in hand? No cards. I don't think there's really any way that I die here. If I attack with both of those, I don't think so. So I will attack for six. Go ahead. Amazing what happens when you actually can draw some untapped lands with the stack. You can double spell and play things on curve. Yeah. the line here because I could so if I activate Lord of the Curse you can only block one zombie and then you would die you've got one card in hand what could it be let's see because if you go let's let's say it's a stomp so I activate you block there Honestly, okay with that actually. So, um, I'll activate. Give them menace. Mm -hmm. Move to combat. Uh -huh. Attack. I'm the petty theft. I'll bounce and bounce. Sure. Go four blocks. Go for the throat. Sure. Yep. All right. There we go. That was going to say, because I had the go for the throat, and I'm like, well, this will work out either way, because, <clears throat> you know, if it's a stop or whatever. We I just... got a little greedy. I think I win that game <clears throat> if I play safer and don't go for the win on that turn. Yeah, the the with the collecting. I forgot Lazotep Reaver was a thing. Oh, Lazotep Reaver. Well, that I, was the only thing that got you out of that. Oh, I or know. I won because I'm like when I had the collect because I had the I had a couple different options because I had two lords in my hand and I'm like I could play a lord to be safe, but then I'm like thinking about it, I'm like I actually really want a Lazotep Reaver here, which I needed Lazotep Reaver. If you would have just whatever. It, if I, you would have just played a lord, you would lost that turn. Right. Yeah, I could, well, that's what I, because the thing is, is because with the Lucky Clover, you're two for wanting me, so I have to two for one. I can't, I can't just one for one my creatures in this matchup. So I had to collect a company. And you um, had to and hit Lazatep oh, Reaver. Yeah, exactly. Oh, oh yeah. No, the Lazatep Reaver was, was very good. If you don't hit a Lazatep Reaver right there, I think you just lose. I probably do. 
probably. Okay, all right, well, we're going to go ahead and shuffle up for our final game, and we'll see you in just a second. All righty, so we are ready for our final game here. Nate is on the play again. Nate, how's your hand looking? It's all right. Uh, I only have two lands, so it could bite me in the butt again, but here we go. All right, yeah, my hand's looking pretty solid overall. It's got a little bit of everything. Nate, go ahead and start us off. I'm going to play tap land and pass. All right, well, traditions, turn one champion. Go ahead. Has it every time. Even the extended art one, too. It's the cool one. I, You know what? I can't complain because every time I draw it on turn two, turn one. My, so. It's actually funny. I think every <laughs> champion in this deck I think is a different... Because I have the extended art, regular, commander one, and I think something else. So this is going to be f awesome. I almost swore because of how awesome this is going to be. So I'm going to play another champion. And I'm going to trigger this one. And then you're going to play, and I'm gonna play another champion. <laughs> I'm going to trigger this. I'm going to attack for three. Yeah, I'm at 17. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I had triple champion in the opener. I'm like, oh, oh, my goodness. This is going to be so good. Well, I didn't draw third land, which is a little awkward for me. Uh, but that's okay. Um, I think I'll just pass for now. All right. Well, so I'm going to play this Sliverboard Pathway. Actually, yeah, I'll play this Dark Boy. So it's very interesting. I got a couple different cards I could play here. Um, I think I'm going to... This is interesting. Um, nah, we're going to go for it. I'm going to play a Lord of the Accursed. Okay. Um, in that case, what I'll do is... I will double stomp. Petty theft the oh, two champions. Sure. Okay. Trigger. Attack for three. I'll take three. Go ahead. Give me a land. That's not a land. We might be in trouble. I was hoping for a land right there. Didn't get it. Um... So I guess I'll pass. All right. Draw. Good draw. Okay. Um, champion. Uh, yeah. Trigger. Uh, in, in response to the trigger, actually. Trigger on the stack. Double stomp. I'm going to double stomp. Kill the two. All Is right. Okay. Uh, I'm just going to... Uh, um, that just tells you also the power of Lucky Clover, because you probably would have died like turn four. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm alive because of Lucky Clover right now, to be honest with you. I'll play Lazatep Reaver. That's why it would have been insane. I'm going to attack for two. Twelve. Go ahead. Well, uh, beggars can't be choosers, I guess. Uh, I'm going to pay two life. Sure. Go to 10. And uh, I think I want to... I want to sweep the board. Sure. That seems pretty good for me. Go ahead. Untap. Draw. I'm going to go to 18. I'm going to play a champion. Go ahead. So there's a Coco in your hand. Got it. Maybe. Can I stop drawing the exact lands I kind of don't want? <laughs> huh. I can relate to that. Uh, I'll go to eight. Kind of hurts. Yes. Uh, but I think it was necessary, and then I'll pass. Okay. Sure. Let's see what you get. Well, it was a decent... It was, it was not a great one, but it wasn't terrible. Um... I have two triggers on Champion of the Parish. I would like to respond. Yeah, probably Double Stomp or Petty Theft or some shenanigans. Uh, virtue of Courage. Sure. And I'll kill these two. Sure. All right. All set? Um, Lord of the 
first. Yep. Uh, move to combat. Yep. Attack for four. Go for uh, Trigger that. I'm going to draw a card of his life. Did I play a line for turn? No, I did not. Go. End step. I'll seek the beast. The beast has been seeked. Sunk? It has suck. It has suck. <laughs> it has suck. <laughs> What's the past term of seek? Uh, seeked. I'm gonna untap. It's sunk. I'm gonna draw. I'm gonna play a land. Uh, I'm gonna play a lucky clover because why not? Because you're a scrub. I am. The card's so good. It oh is my god. Very good. <laughs> clover <laughs> is is very good. Clover is keeping me alive. <laughs> Single-handedly, the only reason I'm alive is Lucky Clover, probably. I, yeah, I, I, well, I, I had triple championed, I would probably say so. Because <laughs> I had the Lord. I also could have played the Lazatep Reaver, which would have just... Either way, I would have done the same. But, yeah. Insane. Well, the math, how much that attack would have done. Because that would have been... Because that was a four, so it would have been... 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. That would attack for 13. Am I going to let this Bone Crusher that deals 6 damage go away? Because I I have to kill stuff. It's <laughs> a good Am question. I... You're at one card in hand? Yep. It's a good one, too. How good? Pretty good. It's one of Pro Tour. I guess Which, that doesn't really narrow it down, but. <laughs> nah. I think we do this and let the. I really want to use my bone pressure. See, one thing about this deck that makes it difficult is <laughs> I want all the value. Right. <laughs> But I can't always have all the value because I have to kill that stupid Glissa. It's true, yeah. <laughs> like, I have to. And I have to kill the Lord of the Accursed, so I think we're just gonna Brotherhood's End and yeah. bye bye Bone Crusher and kill the Goose. Okay, sounds good. All set? Yeah. End step. Uh oh. I'm gonna bring back Razor Lash for my Greybeard. Am I gonna die? If I draw Lord. <gasps> well, it wasn't Lord yet. Uh. I'm gonna lose two and draw a card. Three. Oh, Lord. I'm at one. Notably not dead. Good. Okay. Maybe I should have went the other way. I think it might have been safer. I forgot that card was in the graveyard. <laughs> Cards cracked. Um. I already know what card I'm gonna bring up in the exit. Well, that enters tapped. You couldn't even shock that in, even if you wanted to. Oh yeah, the new rules prevent it, right? Well, it's just you can't you can't pay two because you don't have two life. Uh, I'll make three one ones. Sure. Uh, I will. Play a five five. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is this is how it goes. Now I got all the lands here. Um, I guess I have to. I'm gonna draw a card and lose three. Um, two. I'm gonna play a Lazatep Reaver trigger. Uh, move to combat. Mm -hmm. Tech for three. Black. Yep. Dice. Um, push. Sure. Go ahead. Okay, 
Well, you can't bring it back this turn. And I'm holding an Elder Spear Guide. You don't know me. I doubt it. Because <laughs> that card, I don't think it's legal. No, oh my god. Could you imagine if Elder Spear Guide was legal in this format? I want to play that card so bad, but I can't. I have to play creatures, I think. Because i got to be able to block because I'm at one life. <laughs> right. <laughs> yep. Uh, and then we'll play the Bone Crusher. Yep. Good counter. And then I'll pass. Alright, until draw. Hey, now we're waste. Um, that is a lot of lands. Yeah. Glissa. I guess it's pretty good. It's not bad. Um, I do that. Go ahead. Okay. Untap. Untap. I'm... So, we are way too far into the game here. You were actually dead. This is supposed to come back with a plus one, plus one counter. Mm. We can keep playing, but I'm an idiot and you were dead. <laughs> <laughs> but, for the viewer's sake, we will keep playing. I, to I totally forgot that came back with a plus one, plus one counter. It shouldn't. It's too good. Oh, just, yeah. I know people in the comment section probably are going to go ballistic now. Well, because they watched the part where I didn't kill you, and then they hadn't gotten to this point. They'd be like, oh, Crane is such an idiot. And, <laughs> which, they're not wrong, but... That's an instant? Oh, God. I, 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 why is that an instant? Why, why can I do this on your turn? Sure. I suppose... I'll pass. Okay. Uh, and so, bring this back with a plus one, plus one counter. Sure. I'm gonna draw a card, lose life. Mm -hmm. Untap. Draw. Crip breaker. Sure. Um, move to combat. Uh, yeah. You're at one, huh? Yeah, I'll attack here. Okay. Uh, five. Seek thrills. That, sure. That's an instant, by the way. Didn't realize yeah. that. Yeah, you didn't know that was an instant? No. <laughs> I figured you do. Now I just get to get 21 cards. Look at 21 cards and see if... Well, there's the first seven. Mm-hmm. I only got one, which is a little unlucky. But I get to keep going. Uh, what do you... Is that a brain bar? Okay. So many cards. This deck is so sweet. What do you get in this one? <laughs> A whole slew of cards. Oh, I'm dead. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm dead because you just go block here and then you stop me for six and then you stop me again. Yeah, so yeah, the game's over. No, we're good. Okay, well, that's it. I mean, in a way I won, but in a one other way I lost. So, yeah, that just tell again, the power of Lucky Clover. Lucky cloak, right there. Like it's that just shows. Even at one, I didn't feel comfortable before. Well, no. Well, it's because of ducky again. The lucky clover, because it you were able to make the chump blockers, you know, for three turns just by with with the lucky clover. Also, also, I will say I did misplay. Uh, you misplayed. Well, I'm saying. Well, actually, that... I didn't. I didn't make a misplay. I just didn't know how the card worked. <laughs> I made a misplay. Uh, the turn that I... I should have hearts desired. The turn that I uh, decided to blow up the board. Because I had the hearts desired in my hand. And mm -hmm. I could have made three blockers. And then right. wiped the board. 
And then the next turn, I could have also cast a spell on top of wiping the board, because I had five mana at that point. Right, fair. Okay, all right, well, we're going to go ahead and uh, we're going to get ready for the post game here. We're going to finish up sideboarding, and we'll see you in just a second. Alrighty, so we are here for the post game analysis. So I forgot to mention this in the at the beginning of the video. So a couple of things we're going to talk about. Uh, we're going to talk about like the overall match as a whole. Uh, we're going to go over um, how our decks would fare in the overall Pioneer metagame. And then the last thing we'll talk about is like reprints or hypothetical cards that would help make our decks uh, just better overall. So okay, I'll go ahead and start with the zombies. So the zombie deck played very well. The First game was really awkward because, like, all my lands after turn two entered tapped because I had, like, the... I had the Lock Twain without a basic, well, without a Swamp, and then it was Blooming Marsh, Blooming Marsh, and I think... Yeah, yeah, so that's what it was. So I was able to... I was able to, like, play two spells a turn, and you're the Clover with the Stomp... And the other, the the red virtue just got so much value that I just wasn't really able to really do anything. Um, and then, like, other than that, the rest of my hands were really good. Like, the curve was great. Um, had a couple lands. Was able to get to four mana to Collected Company. So, like, overall, it just felt great. And, I mean, what's really unique, especially with um, Zombies Now, specifically, is... For a long time, like, Zombies was always just, like, the most medium tribe ever. But a lot of cards they've been making recently um, have been just kind of pushing the power limits. Like, for instance, like, Champion of the Parish, Parish, from original Innistrad, or I think it was, yeah, it was Innistrad, is incredible. Then they, then Black gets a, they get Champion of the Parish, they get their own, which is incredible. They get Glissa, which accidentally is a zombie, like... It's just a really, really good card, but obviously it's a zombie that's just super duper pushed, so you get that. And it's like, the deck just in recently has been getting a lot of good cards, uh, which I think can open up, <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of different, different opportunities for zombies to maybe actually be a deck in the format overall. But anyways, all right. How do you, I mean, you go over your summary of the deck. I mean, obviously, you you drew, like, a hundred extra yeah. cards. So, I mean, like, so, you know, you tell me how it went. This deck is pretty sweet. Uh, I definitely made some misplays because I was trying to get more value. And I think that if I had played a little tighter and just, like, played the cards, I, I was trying to go for max value, which is which is fine. But there were some plays that I made for sure that I could have done differently or done something differently in, in those turns where um, I wouldn't have died to your creatures uh, as quickly because for example in the game three that we played uh, I had the virtue in my hand, the red virtue and I hit you in the face instead of killing two of your dudes which changed the whole landscape of that game. Right. Uh, because I could have killed two of your dudes and then blocked and had favorable had favorable blocks for the rest of the game after that. Right. Or even just killing the uh, the death touch guy would have given me favorable blocks for the rest of the game instead right. of because I still had the bounce spell in my hand and I still had all this other these other things I could have done. Um. So I think if I played a little tighter. I would have been able to win the more games and be more efficient. Uh, but a new deck, never played it before. New cards. I was excited. It was fun to cast the new cards. And Baluna, it wasn't as good as I thought it was going to be. Except the the last game we played, where it drew like right, you drew the the cards. double the double <laughs> stomp the double stomp to for the cheese. Um, I think what's... So that was one thing I was going to mention was, like, we definitely each made a lot of misplays. So we are not, like, experts with these decks. That was your very first time building it. You've never played it. It was, like, a concept build. Like, the zombie deck, I've played it, like, one event. Like, I built it, but I didn't, like... Like, building the deck and realizing the play patterns are, like, two different two different things completely. Like, obviously, game four, I didn't even know until later that Razor Lash Transmogger came back with a woman counter. Like, you know, like, obviously, when we play them here, the odds are that we have either never played the deck or, like, 
played it very few. I know the one exception is, like, the Wiltleaf Aggro, the last time we played, like, those decks we are very familiar with, and those games were, like, really tight. But, yeah, these ones are, like, we've never actually played these decks before, right. which is pretty huge. So, from this side of the table, like, observations I made is, one, Lucky Clover is by far and away the best card in the, in the deck, and you could almost make the argument that you should mulligan to it. Like, obviously, if your hand is, like, three to four lands, innkeeper, stomp, and, like, a Baluna, yeah, that's definitely, like, that's a keep for sure. But, like, the the games where you have turn, like, turn two or three Clover and not were, were not, are night and day for sure. Um, like, because pretty much... The I mean, we didn't have good examples because I, I literally had it every time. So right, right. So it didn't. I, I we didn't see a game without it. But without Lucky Clover, like I don't kill two things every turn. I don't. Right. I don't do half of the things that I was do. I mean, Lucky Clover makes the deck. It literally makes the deck. If without Lucky Clover, if I was just playing two mana shocks, and then like a creature on the other side. I don't think the deck would be very good. Right. And I think, and like, that's kind of the, the reference I made um, at the end of game one with like, you know, putting together cards that are not quite as good, um, but they make, they have a really good synergy that makes it work. And like Lucky Clover is like the crowning example of that. Like Bone Crusher Giant's kind of an exception because it's really efficient, but like Scalding Viper and uh, Edgewell Innkeeper and Baluna and the Red Virtue, like, they're all okay cards, but you put them all together with the Lucky Clover, and it just, it's so good. It's so, so good. Um, so that was, at least from my point of view, which was huge. And I also forgot to mention with the with the Lucky Clover, is the hands it, where this deck has turn one champion and not turn one champion is a lot different. Tur having a turn one champion in the Parish... That is also something that you had is, every game. <laughs> I had it one... Yeah, three and four. Yeah. I didn't have a game two. Well, I had it. Oh, I know I did have a game two because I did my time. first draw. That's right. But it, to be fair, it died every turn because you always had the stomp or the red virtue. So I think it actually only attacked on turn two like one time. Um, but but anyways, yeah. So I think that's the matchup was very interesting overall. And I think with the what was not that zombies is the fastest deck, but. If you think about it, the deck, you were able to stem all the bleeding from like the early with uh, from the early game with all your interaction. You were able to make like a thousand different creatures, draw a ton of extra cards on top of that, and then finish out the game. So it's like you're a mid-range deck, but it's it almost it, it's a mid-range deck for sure, but the fact of just you get so much value that it's just like regular mid-range decks just want to like control the board and kind of go from there, which to a certain extent that's what you want to do. But you're just getting so much value off of, like, Lucky Clover with the adventure spells that it just, you just keep refilling. It's just, it's insane. I don't know. Like, the matchup was definitely very interesting overall. So, all right. So, the next thing that we'll talk about is um, our deck's overall place in the metagame. So, with Zombies specifically, um, it's an aggro deck, but it's... It's able to grind a little bit. You've got, like, like Death Baron giving Death Touch is huge, especially against, like, all their aggro decks, because, you know, you can just turn your zombie sideways, and uh, they have Death Touch. So no matter what, you're going to be trading with your opponent's creatures, which is, like, insanely good. Um, I think, overall, it's a pretty good deck in the metagame. It's, uh, I think it's not very good against, like, Rakdos midrange. Um, I guess we'll, we'll, we'll summarize it. Any deck that, like... Not quite humans, but like all the other low to the ground aggro decks. Whatever those matchups are like are probably the same with zombies. Um, except also having the flexible removal and hand disruption, I think, is definitely a plus, though, for zombies. Being able to, like, it's a little slower, so combo decks have an opportunity to assemble. But the fact that I'm playing Thoughtseize can maybe change that a little bit. Um, and the removal is very good with I kind of mentioned that, but the removal with the zombie deck is fantastic. Because I'm playing Go for the Throat, uh, Murderous Rider, and I get Assassin's Trophy out of the sideboard and Abrupt Decay if I want it. I will say, for this deck, usually when I play decks, I hate getting Thoughts East. <laughs> I usually hate it. But this deck just recovers from it. I mean, it, right. I will say that the Teamer Adventure deck, unless they Thoughts you like three times in the first like couple turns... 
Your lucky clovers are going to dig you out of a Thoughtseize so I, I, fast. I think as long as they don't Thoughtseize your lucky clover, I think, I think you don't care. Right. I think, which when I did Thoughtseize, that was like the ultimate goal was to Thoughtseize your lucky clover. And obviously that didn't happen because I drew it the turn after you played the lucky clover. Yes. But yeah, no, for like, for me, it was essentially what it did. The game I cast is what I wanted it to do. I wanted to get my battlefield out take like one removal spell so that way I can actually just finish the game off. Like that's essentially like obviously like priority number one is taking the lucky clover if I get the turn one thought sees. But yeah, definitely you don't care that much about thought sees because you're like, whatever, I'll just I'll just draw a bunch of cards anyways. I don't right. even care. Like, so against other mid range decks, I think if I were to play against this deck and I don't know that I'd take thought sees out, but I might trim one if I right. was playing like my regular Golgari mid-range. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's as good against this specific mid-range deck as it is against other decks. Um, just because it, it doesn't do anything. I mean, it, if you take the Lucky Clover, it's great. If you don't take the Lucky Clover on turn one, it doesn't matter. Because they're right. going to they're gonna outvalue you with their spells. Right. I think post-board, too, what's really important is, at least in my current cyborg configuration, I had actually nothing to destroy Lucky Clover, except Assassin's Trophy, which I didn't think was worth bringing in. Um, like, I feel like that's the biggest thing, is do does your opponent have interaction for the Lucky Clover? Like, do, are they packing, like, a Braid, for instance, or um, Outland Liberator, or, you know, whatever? You which, know. you know, I don't think... As far as I've seen, there there is a lot of interaction with it, but there's not a lot of people playing the interaction that goes it, yeah. with it. I mean, I, I, Black Green's is the exception, and that's why it's my deck of choice, because the removal is so... Really good. So good. I mean, when I play Golgari, it's because you can... You can destroy anything with all your removal spells. I think you could almost actually make the argument, though, in terms of, like, metagame, that because people aren't really playing it's artifact destruction, there, yeah. that you should be. Oh, yeah. Like, every deck can have artifact destruction. Just, you know, disruption. But whether or not they actually have it, though, is the question. Because not everybody's, like, playing a braid. Like, that's probably the most common one. Abrupt Decay, not a lot of people are playing Golgari, you know? So I think that, like, for some decks, you just play the Lucky Clover, and there's not a lot they can really do. I mean, like... They have know, the Sages, most, like, port, green decks will have And the they sages. have, like, Portable Hole, but, like, it's pr it's pretty linear, though. Like, there's not a lot of great answers for it. Right, and once, you, once you've spent a Portable Hole on a Lucky Clover, it's probably too late, because first off, I do play Bounce Spells. Right. I yep. am going to return that spell to your hand. Right. And then I'm going to get my Lucky Clover back. Right. Or um, another thing to consider, which I didn't put in the sideboard, but I think I might um, for Artifact Destruction because it, it might come up. Uh, Embreath Shieldbreaker. Yeah. Just yep. play, like, two copies of Embreath Shieldbreaker, and then, like, you get to kill their their artifact, their portable hole. Yeah, you could make the. I can imagine you're playing against like gruel boats. <laughs> you just like you play that and copy it, and you're like, yeah, I'll destroy your sky sovereign in your chariot. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. And it, it, that card would just hose, hose some of the, some of the boat stacks that are running around. Right, or it, it's also good against like sack. Like, oh, you're tapped out. Destroy your witches oven in your blood. You know, right. like or your. Bank Buster, if they're playing, you know, whatever. Like, I, I think in general, it could just be good. Just double a braid, turns out, or not double, double smelt. Double right. smelt, yeah. Double smelt, pretty good. So, okay. And then the last question that we have here is, what hypothetical cards, well, new cards or reprints would push the deck? So, I think my deck, it's pretty obvious here, is um, the first one that comes to mind is definitely Gravecrawler. Gravecrawler is is so, so, so good. Um, obviously, you know, it's a 2-1 for 1. Yeah, it can't block. doesn't even matter. Um, you can just cast it back from your graveyard if you have another zombie. So, Gravecrawler is very, very good. I wouldn't be surprised if it does make its way into Pioneer um, at some point. Um, 
The other card that comes to mind for me is a card also like Carrion Feeder specifically. Um, Carrion Feeder is just a very efficient zombie in general. Obviously, Sack a Dude, put a plus one, plus one counter on it. Also works extremely well with Grave Crawler too, which is pretty hilarious because, you know, you sack it. Oh, you still have a zombie, you cast it again, you sack it, um, which is pretty funny. So um, in terms of that, a lot of the old zombies that are not really in um, Pioneer are not that fantastic. There's also like Undead Augur, which is decent, but I think overall, overall, all the good lords are in Pioneer, um, and most of the good zombies are already in Pioneer. So at that point, not a lot of huge upgrades the deck could get. Um, what do you think about yours? Um, if there were, and there might be, I like I said, I haven't played this deck for very long. If there were a one or two mana spell that was an adventure that um could exile graveyards i mean that would be huge i mean that's something that i feel like the deck is missing a little bit uh we we saw it i should have lost game three or game four uh because that thing came back from the graveyard and it should have been a four three but, yeah. four two instead of a three one right which wouldn't have mattered if there was some sort of graveyard hate that was an adventure spell. I, I feel like an adventure card like that would have to be... It'd be very interesting, because assuming that the graveyard hate was on the adventure part of it, it don't, it'd have to be like like a one and a green, or like one and a black, or, you know, whatever. Well, it'd be At least for your deck, it'd have to be green. It'd be like exile, like two cards, two cards from a graveyard if one of them was a creature gain to life and that or, would be perfect and then like the flip side is like it eats from the graveyard so it'd be like a we it'd be like an ooze like a three three for three uh when it attacks exile a card from a graveyard if it's a creature put up plus some or you gain to life like it's just the same ability or something you know that's at least what i could think of i think what's huge though is so with um the lost caverns of ixalan coming out they already showed that there's going to be adventure cards in um, the Lost Caverns. So I think really that's like your deck's biggest thing is just keep printing adventure cards. Right. Just keep, I don't know if they're going to be evergreen somewhat soon or if they're just going to like the next couple sets, they're going to put adventures, um, you know, keep putting them into standard. But I think like single-handedly, if they print adventure cards, Lucky Clover in your deck just gets better. Right. I think single-handedly. I think, uh, I think if they printed one more removal spell... Uh, that wasn't an enchantment that I'd ever want to cast, I think the deck would be perfect, in my opinion. I, I like The fact that the Bone, Cru Bone Crusher is extremely efficient. It doesn't need to be Bone Crusher Giant. But if you had like a one mana or a two mana deal two damage, doesn't need to prevent all damage, something just, just exactly like the enchantment, but you made it like a one mana one one, on the other side. What if, like, it was Adventure, it was, like, Magma Spray, and then the flip side of it, it'd be a, probably a red creature. So it'd be, like, a... Imagine a, it's, like, a 2-2 two, two for 2, and then it's, like, it gets plus 1, plus 0 if you have a card with Adventure in Exile, or a card on an Adventure. There we go. <clears throat> Which actually, now that I think about that's that. Wow, that'd be really good. <laughs> but, another another thing that I wouldn't mind is um, like a storm's wrath. Oh, that'd be good. Like a, a four mana or maybe even five mana because of Lucky Clover existing and the, the fact that it's an adventure card that deals like even if it was five mana and dealt like three damage, I feel like I'd play it. I feel okay. like I'd play I'd play a copy of it or two in at least in the sideboard because. What you don't want to run into is, like, Brotherhood's End does a job. It's great. Um, but if we could have a removal spell that was an adventure that you could double or, or something like that, like, if it... A thing that we don't have is a way to deal with Shieldred. Like, we, oh, we can't it. beat a Shieldred, I don't think. Which, I think that's the unfortunate story for, like, most aggro decks in this format. Like, unless you're, like, a black base aggro deck, like... You really can't beat Shieldred, you know? And I feel even, like that... And even then, the black-based ones are struggling to beat Shieldred because they're just... They're playing Shieldred, 
and they're also playing all the removal spells. Right. If you're playing mid range, like I never feel bad when I'm go- when I play black green against mono white. It doesn't. <laughs> it, I always feel great. I always because my sideboard is loaded with mass removal. I would. Never I play Kalidus in my sideboard because I love Kalidus. Right. It's probably not the best choice, but I love Kalidus. So I, I, I would that. never feel bad about just hosing <laughs> on a mono white player. No offense to anybody that plays mono white here, but no, I. I don't think I really ever feel bad for, like, hosing anybody for the most part. I mean, like, in terms of, like, main decks you see in the Pioneer metagame. Like, I, I don't really feel I, bad. I don't feel bad when I trash Mono Green. <laughs> I, I love oh, that's, that feeling. Well, that's one of the best feelings, for sure. Yeah. Like, uh, when, you, when you beat and, Mono Green, because, like, I, you can make the argument, like, you know, like, oh, this deck actually... No, Mono Green is the best deck in the format. It, yeah, it is the best deck. So when you yeah. just crush it, we have a guy like, that plays yeah. mono green every week at our F and M. He's a great guy. I love him. However, he plays mono green every week, <laughs> and like it's very difficult to beat. It's as weird. just a general rule, I haven't. I think he's went undefeated completely at Pioneer since he started playing Pioneer. He, There's like one or two events so, that he's lost. So for those who've been watching the channel for a while, it's. The, the person who plays the Mono Green, he's on the channel a lot, you know, with the feature matches. I, I've i beat him one time in Pioneer against playing that deck. and I Which think, is nothing against him. He is a great so player on top of we, playing Mono Green. But. The only person that consistently is beating him is Caleb, because Caleb is playing Blue-White Spirits and just, like, has a million counter spells. I, I have a decent matchup, but that's only because... Of me playing scavenging ooze in the main oh, deck. Scavenging ooze is so good. Because otherwise, I don't think there's many decks that can deal with the troll. The I mean, troll, in my opinion, the the best card in that deck for that deck is troll. It is. Oh, it, I mean, hands down. I mean, we talk about how good the planeswalkers are in that deck, and they are good. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to sit here and say that Karn's bad. I love Karn. I've played a lot of Karn. But I don't think Karn is the problem. That's a hot take. I don't. I really don't <laughs> think Karn is the problem. And and you know what, YouTube, you can flame me in the comments. But <laughs> I don't think Karn is the problem. I've played with Karn a lot. The okay. only reason Karn is a problem is because there's an infinite combo with out of the sideboard. Oh, I, I agree. And I, if I it, can... if if they banned the the cards that made an infinite combo happen, I don't think anybody would complain about Karn. Except maybe the artifact decks that get hosed by Karn, which aren't good right now anyway. What is that? But then, okay, so the artifact decks are bad, so people aren't playing the artifact destruction, so that's why Lucky Clover... It all comes back to Lucky Clover! I love this That's what I'm telling people! It all comes back to Lucky Clover. But anyways, alright, we got a little bit sidetracked with the overall metagame, but anyways, Nate... Thank you very much for coming. I It's been a while since we had done a Pioneer Showdown. I'm glad that finally we were able to record another one. Let us know in the comment section below. What what deck do you want to see on the next episode? I know that a lot of people have been requesting budget decks, which I've got a couple brewing right now that we might potentially do. Um, we'll see. All right. Just let us know in the comment section below. Also, you know, how many misplays we made. Give the timestamp. Just give us everything. We want to know all the misplays oh, yeah. that we made. We want to know all of it. So I'd like to thank everybody for watching this episode, and we'll hope to catch you in the next one.